Good morning. I'm glad some people turned up. I was uh, wondering if it was just going to be me. I was going to get all lonely, start crying, but it's good. I don't have to do that now. All right. Okay, Anna, I'm going to ask you to uh, put your video on, please, if you don't mind. Okay, so we were, oh, what were we doing? That's right, we were doing the inert equation. Now, we're going to do some, uh, some redox balancing today. That'll be fun. And let's, uh, let's look, at the, look, look at the schedule a little bit here get an idea of what we're going to be be up against the next couple of days. So we've got, let's see. All right, so yeah, we're doing, yeah, it's electrochemical stoichiometry and the method for solving redox problems. So we'll get to do that as well today. And then next Tuesday, we'll do the introduction to galvanic cells probably the galvanic cell problem as well I'll probably get that all done tuesday then that gives me a bit more time to go back and, and look at the stuff that uh, we would have looked at at the the week after spring break but again you know you do have some zoom lectures to look at for that from the previous semester but uh yeah I'll pro i will definitely have time to do that all right, so things are looking pretty. Things are looking pretty good for us here. All right, let's uh, let's go back to what we were doing, and we're going to be looking at redox, and I think electrochemical stoichiometry comes after that. Yes, it does. All right, good. Okay. So redox, redox reactions. Redox reactions are characterized by a change in charge of two species where one goes up in charge and one goes down in charge. And the whole situation is due to a transfer of electrons. Let me see how many people we got here. We got some good, we got some people, good. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you how this is done using an example and here is a, this is a typical redox reaction we're looking at here. We've got MN2 plus going to MNO2 and CR3 plus. So let's take a look at how that works. Oh, let's put it out of way, we don't need that. Okay. And let me show you what exactly makes this a redox reaction. You see, what we're going to be looking at here is we don't focus on the oxygen or the hydrogen or anything else that we see here. We only see, we, or we only ever focus on the metals thing and things that are being oxidized or reduced which is going to be the manganese and the chromium. So the MN2 plus is changing to MnO2 and the Cr2072 minus is changing to Cr3 plus. So what we've got to do here is focus on what the charges are on each of these. Now, in order to balance this, you don't have to do what I'm doing here, but I, I do want to show you this just to illustrate exactly what a redox reaction is. So here it's pretty clear what the charge on manganese is. It's two plus because it says it's two plus. Now MnO2 is, if you look at the oxidation state, oxygen has a negative two charge. 
So two times negative two would be negative four, which means the MN is going to actually be four plus. So this is two plus going to four plus for the manganese. And we're only focusing on the manganese here, right? The Cr2072 minus, the zero, by the way, is the charge on the MnO2. There is no charge on it because there's no superscript up here. But for the, for the chromium here in Cr207, it's two times Cr plus seven times negative two because there's seven oxygens. And all of that adds up to negative two, which is the charge on the entire thing. So when we do the algebra here, we get six plus on the chromium. So the chromium here is plus six and it's going to uh, plus three. So what you can see here is that the MN is going up in charge while the chromium is going down in charge. So we're going from two plus to four plus on the manganese and plus six to plus three on the chromium. And this is very typical of redox processes. Uh, you know, one thing goes up in charge, the other thing goes down in charge. You don't actually have to find these charges, but it's, it can be useful to, to look at and say, well, what am I expecting to have happen here? I've got oxidation on one reduction on the other, and then you can figure out which side the electrons should be on as well. So if this is two plus going to four plus, that's going to be an oxidation because the charge is going up. Here, the charge is going down. That's where the word reduction comes from because the charge goes down. It gets reduced, reduced in charge. That's the whole point. And what that means is we can figure out what side the electrons are on. Now, if you remember what I talked about, that reduction is gain of electrons. It means electrons should be on the reactant side. And for oxidation, that's loss of electrons. We talked about this last time. And that means that electrons will be on the product side. So we're expecting to see electrons here for the, that's reactants. And here we're looking at the products. So the electrons would be over here. And that's products. All right, does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, so let's go through the, the process here of uh, balancing a redox problem. And it's done in a number of steps and I'll show you the steps here. This is the summary of the steps. We split the reaction into half reactions, which effectively means just making sure that we've got the two different sets of reactions going on that have the manganese and the chromium. We balance the atoms that aren't H or O. We balance the oxygen by adding water. We balance the H by adding H plus. We balance the charge by adding electrons. We multiply the half reactions to make the electrons the same. We add the reactions together, cancel the electrons, and then we balance for basic conditions. So all of these are going to be balanced, first of all, for acidic, <coughs> excuse me, and then basic conditions. So let's look at this reaction here. Again, the half reactions, I'm not going to re, well, I guess I will I'll leave it up the top here. Okay, now the half reactions would be, that's usually pretty easy. Mn2 plus goes to MnO2. So I'm just picking out everything that's got manganese and then everything that's got chromium. Anybody have any questions so far? Usually people don't about this one. Now the next step, if you look at the next step here, it's to balance the atoms that aren't hydrogen or oxygen. Effectively, we're balancing the manganese and the chromium. 
Now, if I've got MN2 plus here, that means the charge on MN is 2 plus. There's only one manganese, though. So when you've got this situation, the Y is going to be the charge. I think we're all aware of this. And the Z here is going to be how many X's there are. And that's important to, to be aware of as well. Any questions so far? Okay, so the manganeses are already balanced. We got one MN and one MN, so we're, we're good there. The chromiums, though, we've got two chromiums down here and only one over here, so I do have to put a two in front of the CR3+. plus. Anybody got any questions so far? Usually people don't at this point, but I will be getting into other things later that are a bit more complicated. So let's look at the next step here. Once we've balanced those atoms, we need to balance for, we need to balance the oxygens by adding, adding water. And the way we do that is we count the oxygens on each side. In this case, there's two on the right and zero on the left. So I need to add two H2O to balance the oxygens here. And on the other side, on the bottom reaction, we've got seven oxygens and zero oxygen. So we need seven waters down here. So we just add as many waters as we need oxygens. Okay, at this point, I will do a poll here and see where people are at. Just ignore the last option. All right, uh, please, uh, please vote if you're here. There's one more to vote. Okay. So this is where we're at so far. Can uh, anybody who is, anybody who's not sure, so you know, about half of you aren't sure what's going on. So is there, is there anything that, that can help out here? Any question that you could ask to help? Nobody has any question who can help here? Okay, well, I don't know. I can't, I can't be much clearer than I have been, I don't think. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether the muddy area is coming into play here. Okay, the next thing we need to do after we balance the oxygens, we need to balance the hydrogens, and we do that by adding H pluses. And we count the hydrogens on each side. For this one, that's a two, so that'd be four hydrogens. So I add four H pluses to this side to balance the hydrogens. On this side, we've got seven times two is, excuse me, 14. 14 H pluses. Uh, that would balance the hydrogens out. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Um, I do. Yes, Alexandra. It's more of just a clarification. You're doing the H plus because of the H2O that we added in the step prior, right? Yeah, but sometimes hydrogen is also part of the initial things that we're talking about, and those need to be taken into account too. So not just the water. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Okay. Anybody got any other questions here? Remember, the whole point of what we're doing is to try and balance the reaction, right? That's what, that's what we're up to. So here's the next step, and this is the hardest one. And that is to figure out how many electrons we need to add to each side. 
this is the hardest step, I think. So when we're doing that, we're balancing by adding electrons. What we need to do is figure out the charge on each side of the reaction. So for this one, we've got a charge of two on that side. On this side, we've got a charge of four. Now, how am I getting the four? Well, it's four H pluses, four times one is four. So that's going to be four pluses and that's going to be two pluses over here. To fix the electrons, what I do is I take the find the dif difference. It's kind of like the absolute value of electrons on left minus electrons on right. Oh, it's not electrons, I shouldn't say electrons. Let me, uh, let me get rid of that. I'm misspeaking there. It's not really electrons I'm looking at. Charge. Total charge on left minus the charge on the right. And then add the electrons to the side that has the higher charge. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? It's not that bad, though, really. So let's uh, let's put that into action here. So we've got two on the left, four on the right. The difference, and that's what I'm talking about here, the absolute value. Don't worry about making it negative or positive or whatever. So four and minus two is two. That means we need two electrons. So we need to add that two electrons to which side? The side that has the higher charge. So that's two, that's four. So I add two electrons over here. Any questions? Okay, on the bottom, we've got 14 minus two is 12 and two times three is six. And that means we need to six electrons and that gets added to this side. 12 minus six is six. I have a quick question. Yes, yes. Why, how did you get six for the other, um, that side? Two times three. There's two chromium, three pluses. Two times three is six. Okay. You're and not taking the hydrogen into account? What on the right side? Yeah, from the H2O. No, because we only take anything into account that has the superscripted okay. charge, Alexandra. So for the water, if that's, see, see, it doesn't have any superscript. Okay. No superscript, no charge. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? That was a good question. All right, I'm just going to get an idea here. About the electrons, this quest, this poll is about the electrons. I need to, I need to see how people are with the electrons here. Adding the electrons. Okay, five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, come on, only five of you have voted, six, seven, and one person's refusing to vote, oh, now we go, okay, now we're good, and poll, all right, so you can see we're about 50-50 here on the understanding of the electrons, that's okay, that's okay, I wasn't expecting everybody to get it straight away, we're, we're going to do more examples as we go, so don't, um, don't, don't fret, but does anybody have any questions they could ask at this point that would help? It doesn't matter if you can't, if you can't, it doesn't matter because we're going to do more examples. All right. Uh, what are we doing? All right, the next thing. 
we need to multiply the half reactions to make the electrons the same. Now we've done this before. We did it when we were doing the Nernst equation to balance the reactions. So what we need to do is figure out what we need to multiply these reactions by in order to make the electrons equal. So down on the bottom reaction, we have six electrons. On the top reaction, we have two. So what I'm going to have to do here is multiply this top reaction by three. I'm going to move this down a bit and see if we can. And I'm actually going to, to do something I don't usually do, and that is I'm going to go ahead and do that multiplication and then write the other one unchanged underneath it. So we're going to have. Is this step six? Uh, Yes. Are you still doing something? No, 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 no. This is step six. Okay, thank you. And you can see what I'm doing here is multiplying all the coefficients by three. Does anybody have any questions about this so far? And on the bottom one, we're leaving that the same because the electrons are okay. Six and six, right? So that's kind of the entire point of what we're doing. Okay. Now I need to add these together. This is step seven. The electrons will cancel, right? Now the arrows, I'll try and keep them sort of in a straight line here. It makes it a little bit easier. And I'll do the waters first. Now the water, we've got six waters over here on the top and seven on the bottom. Now remember, these are called reaction equations, which means the arrows kind of act like equal signs. And what we know is if we've got the same thing on opposite sides of an equal sign, we can cancel them out. So what I'm effectively doing here is I'm going to subtract six waters from both reactions or both sides. If I take six from six, it's zero. If I take seven, six from seven, it's one. So I end up with one water down here. And same with the hydrogens, the H pluses. We've got 12 H plus on this side and 14 on this side, which means there's going to be two H pluses left on this side. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see people's understanding of that. All right, how do you feel about the H pluses and the waters? Five, four, three, two, one. I'm not getting everybody to vote here for some reason. But what I'm seeing is everybody understands. At least everybody voted. That's all I can really go on. It's like the it's like the uh, it's like the election, you know. I can only count the people who vote. So, based on that, everybody seems to understand that the H pluses if you don't vote, I'm not going I'm not taking you into account. So, just keep that in mind. I'm going to ignore you. It's pretty brutal, but that's how it is. So I'm just going to bring everything else down here. Three MN two plus, and then Cr two O seven two minus. And then over on the other side, two Cr three plus, and three MN O two. So I'm just bringing everything else down. And that is balanced. It's balanced for acid conditions because we've got H plus here. So that's balanced for acidic conditions. I'm going to delete this up here. I'm going to move everything else up. Okay. 
So that is balanced for acidic conditions. And we can check on the balancing by doing a little bit of counting. So the manganese, we got three, zero, we got three and three on the manganese. Anybody have any questions about that? Chromiums, we, sorry, go on. Are we balancing for acid or base? This is acid so far because we've got H plus here, Alexandra. Okay. Now, I am going to balance for base in a second, but I want to check my answer and make sure I'm right. Okay. So here the chromium is two and here the chromium is two. Let's look at the oxygens. There's seven. And on the other side, we've got one plus three times two is seven. And then the hydrogens, we've got two and two. And then the charge, we've got to balance for the charge. We've got to make sure the charge is balanced as well. We've got six minus two is four plus two is six. And on the other side, we've got two times three, which is six. So I know that my, my balancing is right because all the atoms and all the charges balance all right, I'm going to get a poll here on how you feel about the balancing of atoms and charges. What do you think? Remember, it's completely anonymous. I have no idea who's voting for what. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So it looks like everybody understands that. That's good. All right. So that's what we're doing for balancing for acid. Now let's balance for base. Now this is a little bit, you, you can't balance for base without balancing for acid. That's really the bottom line. Well, you can, but it's very difficult. I think it's much easier just to do it this way. Now to balance for base, what we want to do is we want to turn this H plus into OH minus. And the way we do that is we effectively titrate the reaction. And we do that by adding the same number of OH minuses as we have OH pluses. Now the premise here is that H plus plus OH minus gives our friend H2O. So what we're doing here is if we look at the two H pluses and the two OH minuses, that's going to give water. So it'll be three MN two plus, plus Cr two O seven two minus gives plus two H two O gives H two O plus two Cr three plus plus three MnO two. And you can see now we've got water on each side. So this cancels with one of the waters and this would be the reaction that's balanced for base. It'll be three M oh, plus two OH minus, sorry, down here. So this would be the reaction that's balanced for base. And I'll have to do this down here. And I'll write it down here. It'll be three MN two plus plus Cr two O seven two minus plus H two O gives two Cr three plus plus three MnO two plus two OH minus. See, what makes it balanced for base is that now we don't have H pluses, we have OH minuses. Ninety percent of the time, this follows the same pattern. If you notice what it, look, what it was when it was balanced for acid, the H pluses, there were two H pluses on the left side, that became two OH minuses on the right side and the water flipped sides. The water was on the left, now it's on the right. 
so it was on the left on the right now it's on the left so that's um i mean that's that's 90 percent of the time what's going to happen the other 10 percent of the time when that doesn't happen it's because there were hydrogens in the initial things that were being oxidized or reduced and that kind of threw a spanner in the works but most of the time that's what happens it we get the, the h pluses turning into oh minuses on the other side and the water's flipping sides that's really it so that would be balanced for base does anybody have any questions i have a quick question yes yes so for the left side i understand how you put two h2o where there was two h pluses to make it yeah two waters yeah mm -hmm. um but the other side i had an h2o you just added two oh minus to the side yeah that's because we were we're effectively titrating the reaction which means we're adding oh minus to the entire reaction what you do to one side you do to the other so i was adding two oh minuses to both sides but there's nothing on the left side for the OH minus to, so yeah, nothing on the right side for the OH minus to react with. So I'm just adding two OH minuses straight to that. But on the other side, the H pluses are reacting with the OH minuses. And we always add as many OH minuses as we have H pluses in order to turn that into water. Okay, so say for example, this was a different equation and on the left side, it was like seven H plus, you would add seven OH minuses to both sides. Mm -hmm. You would. Okay. And those seven OH minuses would react with the seven H pluses to form seven waters, but only on one side. Yeah, because and there's on, no H plus on the other side. That's exactly right. And then the then you add seven OH minuses straight onto the other side. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay. Let's look at I want to show you some of the resources I have here. Here we go. Uh, I've got I've got these worksheets. They, those are kind of cool. There's a lot of them there that have a lot of um, different problems and those have answers as well. So that's something you can look at. I've also got these fun quizzes here as well. And what I thought I would do is just do one or two of these. And then we'll focus on the ones that are on the test, because I know those are the ones that are going to interest you the most anyway. The ones on the test are a little bit more difficult. I will admit that. But let's look at this one. Let me uh, get rid of some of this. Whoops. Okay. Okay. So let's go through this as an example. So we've got MnO4 minus going to MnO2. And we've got C2O4 2 minus, whoops. Going to CO2. Does anybody have any questions so far? All right. So that's the, that's the balancing, oh, sorry, that's the splitting into half reactions. The next thing we need to do is balance the atoms. We've got one MN and one MN, so those are balanced. Here we've got two C's and one C, so I need to put a two in front of a CO2. Does anybody have any questions about that? The next step is to balance the oxygens. All right, so this will test you a little bit. How many, can anybody tell me how many oxygens I'm going to need to add, how many waters I'm going to need to add and which side they need to be on? Okay, so we need, you need to balance the oxygens by adding water. Can anybody tell me? How 
how many waters do I need to add? This is for the top reaction. How many waters do I need to add and which side do I need to go on? Let's have a look. Somebody's put something in chat. Two what? Two waters on the right, Max? Yeah, that's right. So let's see how that works. We got four oxygens on the left. We got two oxygens on the right. That means we need to add two waters. All right, let me do a poll here. How do you feel about the oxygens on the top reaction? Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so one person understands halfway. Does that one person want to ask a question? I'm not sure who you are, but I'm asking if there's any way you can ask a question. No, okay. On the bottom, all right. How many, can anybody tell me how many waters need to be added and to which side? It is no waters. That's right. Who was that? Because I can't see your name didn't pop up. Me, Alex. It was Alex. Okay. You need to speak a little louder, Alex. Even Zoom isn't picking you up. Okay. Yes. She's, uh, you're right, Alex. There is no waters that need to be added. And that's because we got four oxygens on the, on the left. We got also four oxygens on the right. Two times two is four. So that's balanced for oxygen. I don't have to add any water at all. That's pretty cool. All right, next one, oh, hydrogens. We got no hydrogens on the left. We got four hydrogens on the right. So I add four H plus to this side. And on the bottom one, I've got uh, no hydrogen. So I don't have to balance anything. For that one for the for the H pluses. Does anybody have any questions about the top one and the four H pluses? Okay. I'm going to create another poll here. Um uh, stop sharing. Okay. Oops, I don't want to do that. I want to add a poll. Let's see. And I need to see how where I'm going to do that. Where are we? Here we go, add. Okay. Okay. It's going to take me a little while to come up with this poll, but it won't, but it'll be worth it, I promise. I don't know how many, I think I can probably only add, um, I don't even put that this, this many options in, unfortunately. Mm. 
That's unfortunate. Okay. All right. This is a default of Zoom. It really needs to give me more options. Okay. At least it'll give me a little bit of any anyway. It's not a it's not the greatest poll. I will admit that. Okay. Okay. So what I'm asking is how many electrons need to be added to the top reaction? Okay, I'll give you another 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, none of you got it right. Oh, hang on, hang on. No, some of you did. Two of you got it right. So the answer is four and the four electrons needed to, sorry, let's have a look. Yes, four, three, no, 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 hang on, hang on. All right, so the, the, we've got four minus one is three and we've got zero on the other side. So it is three electrons. And that's on the left. So three left and three of you got that right. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. Oh, actually, never mind. I realized I was wrong. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? I'm still uh, not seeing it. Can you just yeah, show sure. that? Yeah, mm sure. -hmm. So, so Alexis, four times one is four, and then minus one is three on this side. You okay with that? The three mm -hmm. plus three on this side? Yeah. And on the other side, it's zero because nothing has a charge. Oh, okay. Now look at the, look at the equation. I've got it down here. Charge on the left minus charge on the right. So three minus zero is zero. Sorry, three minus three is three minus zero is three. And then we add the three to the side that had the higher charge. So the side that had the higher charge was the side that had three. So I added three electrons to that. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions about that? So three, three of nine of you got it right. So the other six are still a bit shaky on it. That's okay though. All right, let's look at the bottom reaction. All right. What about for the bottom reaction? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One more, come on, come on, come on. Vote, 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 vote. Make a decision. All right. I don't want to. Okay. So the answer for this one, well, the charge on this side is negative two, the side is, on this side is zero. So we add two electrons to the left. So the answer was two left here. And two of you got that right. Questions? Okay, so let's look at this. 
let's let's look at the how I applied this this thing here. So negative two and zero over difference is two. I mean, when you take the absolute value, zero is higher than negative two. So I added two electrons to to the side that has zero. That's how I did it. Anybody got any questions? All right, I'm going to ask because so many people got that wrong. I want to, I want to see, I want to see where you're at with it. So understanding this bottom one, adding the electrons, how do you feel about it? Come on, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Anybody have any questions? A couple of you don't understand. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Uh, you know, I can, all I can do is ask. I don't know who do, who understands what, but uh, you know, getting the idea. All right. The next thing we do is we multiply the bottom reaction by three, we multiply the top reaction by two. This will allow us to get six electrons onto each side. Anybody have any questions about that? We're trying to even out the electrons. So now we will do the, the hydrogens. We got 8H plus. I'll go ahead and, and do the do the whole thing here. Two MnO two and four H two O. And on the bottom, B three C two O four two minus six CO two and then six electrons. Anybody got any questions? Okay, the electrons cancel. We're left with 8H plus, plus 2MnO4 minus plus 3C2O4, 2 minus 2MnO2 plus 4H2O plus 6CO2. Now that should, that should be completely balanced. So let's look at the hydrogens first. We've got eight, and then we've got four times two is eight. Manganese, we've got two MN, two MN. Oxygens, we've got two times four is eight, plus 12 is 20. So it should be 20 oxygens on this side. On the other side, we've got four, plus four is eight, plus 12 is 20. So the oxygens balance. The charges, we're going, sorry, carbons, we've got six and six. And then the, the charges, we've got eight minus two is six, minus six is zero, and on this side, we've got zero. So everything is balanced. So for this specific problem, what it's asking for is the sum of coefficients. So the way we do that is we add all these numbers at the front together. And if there was nothing in front, you'd assume that there was a one there. So eight plus two is 10, plus three is 13, plus two is 15, plus 10 is 25. So the answer there would be 25. Okay, let's see where we're at. Um, I have a request really. Yes, yeah. <laughs> After, um you do the pole or whatever you were going to do. Can we balance it for base, even though that's not the question? Uh, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll do that in a second. Okay. I will do that in a second. All right. I will balance it for base. It wasn't asked for during the question. You could, you're right, but I will balance it for base anyway. All right. How do you feel about this problem? Is what I'm, is what I'm after right now. How do you feel about this problem? The one we just did. Okay, one more to vote. 
one more. Thank you. There we go. So that's what we're at. that's where we're at right now. Uh, anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions that they could ask to help out? Okay, let's let's balance this for base. I know we weren't asked to, but we'll do it anyway. So to balance this for base, we'll add eight OH minuses to both sides. And the eight OH minuses will add to the eight H pluses. They'll give us eight waters. There are four waters on the other side. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, that's eight and that's four. So th this one doesn't actually balance out the same way as the other one did. So that'll be four H2O plus two MnO4. Oh no, it does. Okay, it does flip over. Yeah, I guess it did follow that same pattern. Okay. So the, the way I handled the water there, I had eight waters over here from the H pluses and the OH minuses. I subtracted four from each side, which is now why I have four on this side and zero on this side. And then I still had the 8OH minuses. Does anybody have any questions about that? That's for the bouncing for base, if we were asked to do that. But I'll tell you a secret. You're actually, you actually won't be asked to do that on the test. Does anybody have any questions? All right, nobody's saying anything. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that. All right, let's go take a look. Let's go take a look at the, the ones on the test. Ooh, let's have a look. Ooh. What the heck is that? That's weird. No, I'm not playing music. I was just doing a silly sound effect. It was funny that the computer thought I was doing something with music and I was making a silly noise. Okay. Here we go. So this is going to be a typical problem that you'll see on the test. There we go. And you'll see it asks for acidic conditions. As I said, I'm not going to ask you anything about basic conditions, but I mean, come on, this is difficult enough anyway without doing anything. All right. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Now, sometimes people don't like these because it's they've got X's and Y's in them and that kind of seems to throw them off or something. But the X's and the Y's are actually what's being oxidized and reduced here. But uh, let's, uh, let's have a look. So the half reactions, Okay, I'm going to create another poll here. This one will be a little bit simpler.
It's not the perfect question, but it'll do. Okay. All right, so how many, how many X's? What's the, co let's put it this way. What's the coefficient needs to be in front of the X? Uh, maybe that's not a good, answer, good question. I'm actually going to cancel that. I'm going to end this poll right now. Sorry. Probably not a good idea. All right. So I guess my point here is we've got one X and one X. So we don't need to do anything in front of it. For the other one, we still got people here? We do. All right. We got uh, two Y's and on the other side, I need to put a two in front of the Y. All right. So anybody have any questions about that first one? Balancing the X and the Y. Okay. Now I'll do my other thing. All right. How many oxygens need to be added on the first reaction? How many oxygens need to be added? How many waters need to be added is a better question. How many waters need to be added? Three. Well, go ahead and do the poll. You're not seeing the poll? Mm, I don't see a poll myself. Yeah, it's, no. You don't see a poll. Okay. It's interesting. That is interesting. No wonder nobody answered it. Let's try it. I'll try it again. I, I just need to see why this isn't working. I don't understand. Can nobody see this poll? Oh, this poll closed. Let's relaunch it. Try that. Okay, here we go. That's better. Now you should be able to see it. So how many, how many waters need to be added? Come on, five, four, three, two, one. No, you're too slow. Okay, it was three. Which side did they go on? The waters. The right. All right. So we had three waters. That's right. Okay. Now look at, let's look at the bottom one. How many, how many waters need to be added for the bottom one? Five, come on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna force this one. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. The answer is six. Okay, so let's see how we get that. So there's people who put three, you were trapped by the three. See, two times three is six. So six waters and they go on the other side. Any questions? Come on. Any questions? Any questions? You're all okay with that? All right. Mm, tricky, huh? Okay, so hydrogens. I'm not going to worry about doing a poll on this one. 6H plus on this side. And ooh, this one. Well, it's bigger than what I have here. So that'd be 12H plus. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Oh, all right. This is a really good one. Um, yeah. All right. So for the top one, how many electrons need to be added? I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about the, and I'm not worried about the side here in this case. So how many electrons for the top reaction, how many electrons need to be added? Don't worry about the side. Just tell me how many you think need to be added. Come on. I'll give you another 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. 
and pull. Mm, I wonder what the right answer is here. Okay. How many smarty pants do we have here? We've got two smarty pants. Yes, the answer is seven. Hmm. Okay. I see how we get that. So on the top, on the left, we've got a total of five. And on the bottom, we have a total of negative two. Five minus negative two is equal to seven. Okay, so if you're worried about that, let's look at a number line and we'll do our difference here. Y, four, three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven is the difference there. Seven electrons, which side do they go on? They go on the side that has the higher charge, which would be the side. Does anybody have any questions? All right, let's see where you're at with that. Okay, the electrons there. The electrons on the top, I wanna to know if you understand that completely. Okay. And most people do. Does anybody have any questions? The person who answered halfway, any questions? Okay. All right. Let's look at the bottom one and I'll ask again. Electrons. How many? Ooh, hang on, hang on. It says how many electrons on the bottom? Don't worry about the side, how many electrons? How many electrons on the bottom? How many, don't worry about what side they have to go on. I just wanna know how many electrons you need to add. Okay, two more need to vote. I'll give you another five seconds. Make your last guess. Remember it's completely anonymous. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll here. All right, the answer is the answer is eight. And again, two smarty pants. Let's see how that works out. So two times negative two is negative four. And that's positive 12. Total there is eight. Total here is zero. Eight minus zero is eight. And it would be eight electrons and they get added to this side. Oh. Tricky, huh? Anybody have any questions? Okay. Tell me about the electrons on that bottom one. Tell me about the electrons on the bottom one. That one person who under, does who understands halfway, can you ask a question to help? Any questions? Okay. So it gets a bit tricky, doesn't it? See, so you gotta you gotta keep your eyes open for these. So for this one, we multiply the top one by eight. and multiply the bottom one by seven. Ooh, it's big numbers, all right. So we're gonna have 56 plus 48 H plus plus eight XO3 minus. 
gives eight x two minuses plus what is that twenty four h two o on the bottom one we'll have forty two h two o plus seven y two gives 14 y03 minus 2 minus plus 7 twelves 84 yeah and 56 electrons any questions Okay, I want to get your understanding of that. I want to make sure you under, you do understand this at this point. How do you feel about what I just did? How do you feel about what I just did? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, looks like everybody understands, so I'm going to go with that. Okay, now we can go ahead and add these together. Now, the electrons cancel, of course. I'll do the H pluses first. We've got 48 and 84. Now, the difference between 48 and 84 is 36. Oops, wrong side. 36 on this side. So I subtracted 84 from both sides. Sorry, it's subtracted 30, uh, 48 from both sides. That gives 36. The waters, let's see, we've got 24 and 42. And the difference there is 18, yeah. Any questions? All right. How do you feel about what I just did with the H pluses and the waters? How do you feel? How do you feel about the H pluses and the waters? How do you feel? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, good. Everybody understands that. Uh, let's see. So now we can just add everything else in. We've got eight XO3 minuses on this side, plus seven Y2s. And then we'll have 14 YO3 two minus and then eight x two minus okay now the cool thing about this problem is you know you'll know if you're right or not so what we'll do is we'll count up all the atoms and then all the charges and see if see how we're doing okay so we'll have eight x's on this side we have eight x's on this side so that's fine now the oxygens eight times three is 24 plus 18 is 42. On the other side, 14 times two is 28. Huh. Is that I 18 oxygens? Uh, oh, it looks like something's amiss here. I've already figured out that I've done something wrong. I wonder what I did wrong. Oh, here we go. No, that's a three. That's the problem. That's the problem. Okay, so that's uh, 14 times three is 42. So that actually does work out. So that's uh, eight times three, eight, eight times three is 24 plus 
18 is 42. So we have 42 oxygens on each side. So that is okay. 14 Ys, 14 Ys. We've got uh, hydrogens, I guess, uh, 36 and 36. So all the atoms work out. Let's look at the charges. The total charge on this side is going to be minus eight. And on the other side, we've got 36 minus 28, which is eight, minus 16, which is negative eight. So it must be right. So I, I know that this is correct. Then the sum of coefficients would be eight plus seven is 15, plus 18 is 33, plus 36 is 69, plus 14 is 83, plus eight is 91. So the answer there would be 91. And that's what I would put as the answer to the quiz. It's not multiple choice, but you are expected to put in an answer. So that's what you put in the box would be 91. Hard to guess it and get it right, I think. You need to actually know what you're doing, I think. Anybody got any questions? Anybody got any questions? All right, well, you know what you need to do then. You need to practice these puppies. You need to practice them. Okay, so uh, I'll leave it there for today. Thanks for coming. And I will see you all on Tuesday. If anybody wants to hang around, talk to me for a bit, they can. All right. Thanks, Karen. Have we gotten to any of the essay like topics yet? No, we're not, we're not doing them as part of lecture. You have to find okay. that information yourself. Okay. That's kind of the entire point. Okay. Are they in the textbook? Like the textbook or on the internet? There's plenty of stuff about everything. But if you want to find stuff in the textbook, I just recommend you use the index. Okay. If you have trouble, you can let me know though. Okay. But look at the look at the notes for the essay question, and I also give an example of what I'm looking for. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No worries. Hey. So this is like off topic with what we're talking about now, but the last test. I forgot to email you afterwards because you know there's like the box where we put in like our work. Yeah. Uh, question two, um, I had problems like saving it. It wouldn't save it on the test. So I just put my answer in that box. And I oh, forgot, okay. I forgot to email you to review it. Oh, okay. I'll take a look. This is test two? Yeah, test two. Okay. I'll take a look, Elizabeth. All right. Thank you. No worries. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.